and welcome. Douglas, Massachusetts is famous for many different reasons. They have a historic 1800s era general store that's been fully restored and very beautiful. Douglas is where General Lafayette during the Revolutionary War stopped to change horses on his way to meet up with General Washington in Boston. But many people also know Douglas for one of its cuter landmarks, which is the ice cream lady. So this is a roadside stop, which is a celebration of our love of ice cream. And I thought it might be fun to draw this. And we'll do this with pen and ink. So we're just going to do this quick and casual to get a sense of what sketching would be like. So this could be if you were driving down the road and you stopped and thought, well, this is the cutest thing you had ever seen. And you just wanted to sketch it and do this quick and easy and then get on with your travels. So when you're sketching something to paint with watercolor, then you want to do it on watercolor paper in general. So that way the paper will absorb the water well and not buckle or bend or all those other kinds of things. So think quick and easy and not necessarily precise when you're sketching. Your idea is just to get a general sense of it with brisk lines and to get it done and to move on. I mean you can always take pictures if you want a more precise image but the idea of sketching is to do casual and fun. So you want to think about shapes. So what kind of shapes do we have involved with our watercolor lady? And I will comment that the pen I'm using is a waterproof pen so that it won't smear when I go painting with water on top of it. So you can use any kind of pen that you want to. This happens to be a Sakura Jerry Jelly Roll 08. But you can use any kind of pen as long as it's, it's waterproof because when you are sketching and then you are painting colors on top of it, you don't want the sketching lines to all get runny and smear all over the place. All right, so let's think about shapes. What kind of shapes do we see in the ice cream lady. Well, I think the primary shape is sort of a triangle in the middle. So you've got the triangle of the cone shape. So let's make a triangle. And the triangle has sort of a flattish bottom. Alright, got sort of a triangle. And she's got some ice cream dripping and making little drippy shapes. So make a little drippy shapes for her ice cream collar. All right, so our head is sort of like a squashed circle. So let's think about squashed circles. It's got sort of a bulge, and then it's got sort of a flattish part, and then a bulge over here. All right, and then we've got more of a circle shape up on top for this top part. And then we've got a top hat. So again, the aim is not to be precise here, just sort of give a sense of the top hat and a band. All right, the arms are sort of like long rectangles and they come off of here. So we got an arm and then it goes down onto her hips. All right, and again, think casual and quick. We are not aiming to be precise. We are just giving a general sense of what this thing is all about. All right, two legs stick out to either side. She's got a mouth, which is sort of a half circle. She's got a round nose. And then she's got some eyes. A 
the night froze. Okay, so again, you're sketching, you're doing something quick and easy. The idea is not necessarily about being precise, it's about just thinking about shapes and designs. You make some little adjustments to it, and that is fine. That is the whole nature of sketching. Alright, so you get some general type of sense. I'm trying to draw around the tripod here and can't really see what I'm doing, so mine is even rougher than usual, and that is okay. The idea is to have fun and be creative and see what you can do. And part of the fun of doing this is maybe your ice cream lady is quite different than their ice cream lady. And that's all part of the fun. What kind of ice cream lady would you make if you were in charge of doing this sculpture? How would she be different? Maybe she'd have a different kind of hat. You don't have to draw a top hat if you don't want to. Maybe she'd have a big flowery hat. Maybe she'd have a bowler hat. Maybe she wouldn't be pink. Maybe she'd be purple. So think about the differences that you would make with your version of an ice cream lady. If you look closely at the thing on the top of her head, there's little bits of ice cream dripping down. So you can make those little ice cream things. You know, in this sculpture, she's wearing a whitish dollop of ice cream on her head. Maybe in yours it will be green or blue. You can do whatever you want to. And there's all this stuff in the background with the picture that we used here. Right, we can put whatever we want to in the background. So let's choose some big brush. We're just getting it completely clean and dry. So we're just going to put water down as our base to make a background for her. So we're just painting water in loosely and casually. The idea here is to have fun and be relaxed. We do whatever we want to do. So I'll put in green for the grass. So remember, if you're the artist, you get to choose everything. You want her in a green grassy field? That is fine. This is your view of the world. If you want your ice cream lady to have blue ice cream, then you go ahead and give her blue ice cream. You do whatever you want to do. If you want the sky to be orange, Make an orange sky. Alright. So a benefit of wet on wet is that the colors just sort of merge and billow and it gives it a very natural look. Everything just sort of goes where it wants to go. But it'll stay in the area that you made wet. So it's not going up into the sky, for example. It's just staying down here in the grass area. All right, so we've got green grass. Now we're going to do a blue sky. So I'm making the brush nice and clean again. So it is just water that I'm painting here. And I'm going to leave a line between the blue area I'm painting and that green area because if the green and the blue area touch then the paint will get sucked wherever they touch and then the green of the grass will go up into the blue of the sky and that's not what I'm aiming for right now. I'm just painting everything wet where I want sky Imagine being the person who was told that they should make a sculpture of the ice cream lady. 
would be quite a fun kind of project to work on. So wonder to yourself, what would an ice cream lady look like? And how is she going to stand up? What flavor should she be? No, is that pink strawberry? Is she a strawberry ice cream lady? Maybe it's cherry. Maybe it's watermelon. What kind of flavor do you think that would be? Oh, see, <laughs> I was saying watermelon, so I went for the red. No, no, no. I had to rinse that out. We're going for the sky. Skies are blue. <laughs> Your sky can be red, but I wanted to make a blue sky. So see how that fellows out in that beautiful fashion? And even though I'm painting across in stripes, all of this is going to billow and relax and do what it wants to do. So one thing to think about when you're choosing your colors that you're going to do is think about where the colors will be up against each other. So let's say I made all of this sky blue and then I decided I wanted the ice cream person to be blue. If I painted her blue and there's all this blue sky around her, then it would be hard to see where she ended because she would be blue and the sky would be blue and it would just be this giant mass of blue. So if you wanted to make her blue, maybe you would put her up against a forest of trees or something that was green so that she had a green background. And that way you could see her against the green. So think about what colors are going to be next to each other and how you can make them easy to see. to be careful about getting too close to that green so it doesn't spread out too much. Got the little nooks of blue in under her arms. And of course if you had lots of time then you could sit there and wait for the green to dry before you even started the blue. But we're trying to do this quick and easy so that you get a sense of how all of this works. All right, so we got a blue sky. We got a green grassy ground. What if we wanted that grassy ground to have some flowers in it? Well, that grassy area is still wet. So let's get one of my other little brushes and let me poke it into here and get some red on it. All right, so I got some red paint on my brush and this is still wet. So if I just touch an area, see how it blossoms out? So it's doing this blossomy thing because the area is still wet. So we're making little flowers. And they're blossoming and billowing. Now we've got some flowers. And they look bright right now, but they will fade because watercolors go on darker and then they fade to lighter as they dry. But we are also going to put in, get a little bit of a darker green. And we'll put in some little stem shapes. And again, because this is wet, these are all going to billow and fade, and that's okay because these flowers aren't the focus of this painting. They're just a little bit of background image. And just a little bit of a sense that she is enjoying herself in the field. Alright, 
So now we've got a field of flowers, a little bit of texture of the other grasses and stuff. And we got the blue of the sky. So normally I would wait for this to dry a little, but because we are doing this quick and easy, this hair will brush right out of here once everything is dry. But I will try to get it out of there for now so it's not distracting. There we go. It's, it's fine to leave it and it'll just brush right out when it's dry if you want to do that. All right, so cone is brown so it's got some brown now again because i'm not waiting <laughs> a danger is if i get too close to the blue on the sides that it will run into the blue or into the green so you want to be careful not to get too close to other wet colors so we'll do this But when you look at quick sketches, you'll often see that the colors do merge at the edges because people are working quick and things are touching, or that they leave these little white spaces so that they don't get the colors to merge. And both of those help give the sense that this was a quick, casual sketch that was done. If we were doing a more long-term sketch, then we would do things like add in the shading so that it has shadow on side of it and that sort of stuff. But since we're doing a quick sketch, we're not worrying about that kind of stuff quite as much. The idea for a sketch is just to give a sense of the feel of the scene and the kinds of things that caught your eye about it. So her arms and legs are a lighter shade of brown. So more like this kind of a color. With watercolor, the brightness of the image comes from the white of the paper. And when you put on thin layers, the light from the room goes through those thin layers, hits the white of the paper, and bounces off of it, and then comes back at your eye. That's why it sort of glows like a stained glass window effect. So the more layers you put on, the darker it gets because you are blocking that light from getting down to the paper more and more. Now think about that when you're putting on your layers, that if you want an area to really glow, put down just a thin layer of color. And if you want it to be darker and less glowy, then you put down thicker and thicker layers of paint to block the light from getting to the paper beneath it. And in general, in watercolors, you paint from light to dark, because since these colors layer on top of each other, and you're looking through all of them, it's very hard to paint something later. Like if I wanted to make lighter spots in those flowers, it would be hard to do that because if I put yellow on top of the red, it's still yellow on red and the red is still blocking the light from getting to the paper. So you wouldn't really be able to see the yellow very much. Mm -hmm. A little black for the shoes. So again, I have to be careful because if that black touches the green or the brown, it's going to billow out and be a black splotch in the other areas. All right, got black for her hat. I want to be careful here because I don't want that black to go out and get into the blue sky. Blue is drying, but it is not completely dry yet. So it's not wholly safe from having color sucked out into it. Alright, and again, this is where you start to have your own interpretation. Do you want her to have a red face, or do you want some other color? I'll go with red, just to have it in here. But that red is very bright, so I'm going to water it down. 
because it's just sort of at the palest of But if you're aiming for a very pale color, then you still want to start light. The more that you water something down, the lighter it's going to get, because you're mostly going to see the white of the paper, and then just the little hint of pigment in there. So you have to be careful here not to get too close to the brown, because that brown is probably still wet. And I don't want the pink to get sucked over there. And if I thought that that was still a little too dark, even when it dries, then I could rinse my brush off so that it is clean. And then dry it a little bit with my fingers or with a paper towel. And now it is a clean, dry brush and it acts sort of like a sponge. So it's sort of sucking the water and the color back up off the paper. So it'll make it even a little lighter yet. So I suck a little bit of the water off and then I will squeeze it off into my fingers. Suck a little bit more of the water off. So I'm using it like a sponge or you can use actual paper towels to sit there and dab on it. I don't think I have any around right now, which is part of why I'm using my fingers. To dab at this, but if you had a little bit of paper towel, you could dab at it with paper towel, and that would bring the color off as well. I'm a little surprised I don't have any paper towel. Is that paper towel? No, it's tissue paper. All right, but anyway, you get the sense. If you had some paper towel, you could dab at it, and that would bring the color off as well. All right, the top of the cone sort of looks white, but it's actually a cream vanilla kind of color. So again, we'll choose a very light yellow. And we will just paint a light yellow in there to give that. All right, so I have to be careful around the hat. I don't want the hat getting black to come swooping down into this yellow area. And then the band on her hat looks like it's a lavender color. All right, so we'll get a little bit of purple. That looks light enough. All right, again, being very careful not to touch the black so that we don't get any of the black, which is wet, dragging into the band area. Her eyes, well, let's do her mouth. Her mouth is red. Got some red still here. Got to be careful because I don't want that red to go dragging out into the pink area. So be careful in there. Her eyes are blue. Be careful because you don't want blue eyes going out into the pink area. So again, normally you do this a little slower if you wanted to be precise, but the purpose of sketching is to be quick and brisk. So when you're going quick and brisk, you want to just be careful about where colors touch each other so that they don't run. And you can see there's all sorts of details in here that I didn't put on. There's like blue blush over her eyes, and there's other details about the eyelashes and so on. But with the sketch, you're just being quick and easy to give a sense of it. Oh no, I'm tempted to put in those eyelashes because they're sort of cute. But all right, we're, we're going to resist. <laughs> we're doing quick and easy and casual and just giving a sense of that. But I will show as an example what if I got some bright yellow. Alright, so I've got bright yellow now and I'm putting little dots in the center of the flowers. So you see you can sort of see them when they're wet, but when they dry it'll be just a little sense of yellow there because that red is going to be so bright it'll overwhelm most of the yellow. So those are things you want to think about when you're laying out your watercolor design, about where the lighter colors are going to be, where the darker colors are going to be. And if it was really important for you to have little yellow centers for these flowers, you might want to leave the centers unpainted 
so that when you plunk the yellow down in there, they stayed nice and bright yellow. So in some cases, you will be able to get the effect that you're looking for. And in other cases, the yellow wouldn't be bright enough and the red would be so bright that it would overtake the yellow in there. And you can think a little about shading. Like if you look at the top ice cream cone, it's a little darker over here on the left because of the way the sun's coming in. And it's a little darker over here down in this wiggly area. So if you add details like that, you start to give more of a sense of the three dimensions of this thing that you're working on. So it doesn't look quite so flat. But again, if you're sketching, you're generally not worrying about that kind of level of detail. You're just worrying about what colors are involved, what shapes are involved. Do a quick, very casual, very easy sketch. All right. <laughs> as much as I said that I don't need to put in the little eyelashes, I want to put in the eyelashes. So, I think this pink is dry enough that I can do this. I just like her eyelashes. And she has much more of a swoop over there. Alright, so she's got eyelashes now. <laughs> so anyway, the idea for sketching is to do quick, fast, and easy. Do a quick pencil sketch so that you get the basic shapes down. Do a quick pen sketch so you get darker lines down. Do quick watercolors. Try to keep the colors separate where you need to so that they don't all merge into each other. But for big swaths, you can do wet on wet so that the colors billow and fill it in. And for more detailed areas, you do wet on dry where the paper stays dry and you just draw in very carefully with your brush where your color is going to go. But even so, when you're doing this kind of sketch, the idea isn't to be precise. It's not about precisely filling in the hat or anything like that. It's just about getting a quick sense of the colors involved and the shapes involved so that you can remember it for when you get home and you want to do a more full oil painting or acrylic painting or something. Or maybe you just like the sketch and the sketch is enough to keep you happy. So let me know if you have any questions at all about the idea of sketching and pen and ink and watercolor and be sure to swing by the ice cream lady to see her for herself and get a sketch for yourself or maybe some photos. So I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.